Welcome to AdvisorCon's webinar Wednesday. Today's topic, Power BI for Project Managers. We welcome the very talented Paulina Montero as our presenter. I'll be your presenter for today. I've been working in data analytics for about seven years with various softwares, including Power BI. In today's webinar, we're going to be covering the next topics. First and foremost, what is Power BI? How is Power BI used for project management, projects data for Power BI? And finally, we're going to go over Microsoft Projects Content Report Pack. Our course objectives are the following. We're going to learn how to create dashboards, enhance dashboards with QA analytics, publish dashboards, and we're going to learn how to empower data-driven decision-making across our organizations. For the first topic, what is Power BI? Power BI is a set of concepts, methods, applications, and technologies which are utilized to transform raw data from unrelated sources into meaningful information that can be utilized by stakeholders and project managers to make informed decisions. Whether your data is a simple Microsoft Excel workbook or a collection of cloud-based and on-premises hybrid data warehouses, Power BI allows you to easily connect your data sources, clean and model your data without affecting the underlying source, visualize or discover what is important and share with anyone or everyone you want. And this can be a shift by sharing your file or easily by publishing your file to the Power BI service. As seen in this visual, you can connect a SQL data set, a cloud service, an Excel or a CSV file in the same dashboard or the same visual or the same report. In Power BI, it's very easy to integrate various sources into the same dashboard to have a more complete picture of what is going on in your organization. Power BI for organizations. Power BI allows you to make better decisions based on past and current data, increase revenue with better understanding of risk and opportunities, customer behavior, and competitors, improve strategic planning, understand the context of KPIs and results, standardize data management and analysis throughout the organization, drive change and improve performance, find and reduce inefficiencies, and improve communication with stakeholders and teams. These are some of the ways in which Power BI can be used to improve organizations. And these are some of the ways as well that um, project managers can utilize Power BI in order to create presentation and dashboards that will be useful for stakeholders and upper management. However, Power BI can also be used by project managers themselves. In Power BI, they can view current projects within the organization, a portfolio timeline by year, quarter, month, and week, and day, resource allocation, including project managers, key project metrics, overdue projects, and risk and issues. As you can see on my screen, I have loaded a sample or demo per se of the project content report pack that Microsoft offers. We can start by looking at the main different areas of Power BI. Over here where you see my mouse moving, this is the page area. This is where you would see your actual report where you would drag and drop your visualizations. And then we have your filter area. This is where you can apply filters for the visuals that you have at hand and where you can also apply filters for the page. Please know that filters for the page will filter out the entire page. Filters for a report for all pages would actually filter out the entire report and filters for the visual would only apply to that visual. If you want to be able to see what filters are applied on the visual, it is also important that you click on the visual first and then you're able to see what filters are applying. As you can see, we have the options to filter by project type and by tasks, but at this moment we're not filtering by any of those in here. Next to our filters, we have our visualizations. This is where all of our visuals would be located. However, we're going to go into the visuals a little bit later. 
in this presentation. Um, another important part to note is that if you want to apply any formatting into a visual, this is the area where that would be located as well. Next to our visualizations, we have our fields. This is where you would find all the tables or columns that were loaded into your data. And in order to apply a field into your visual, it's as easy as just dragging and dropping that field into your visual. One of the things that I love the most about Power BI is actually how user-friendly it is. On your left, you have this view, which is where we actually work on a report. And then right at the bottom of it, we have actually our data view. This is where you can actually go ahead and have a better view of your tables, the type of data they are, and um, what they're actually bringing in. You can actually go ahead and click on any and every of your tables and really just have a pretty good look of your columns and what type of data and if they're bringing data or not bringing data in as well. Over here, this is where you would actually manage your relationships. It is very important to know that if you want to be able to use two different tables per se in a, in a visual, this is where actually it is so important to be able to manage your relationships and to connect your tables by a common identifier on them. I sort of skipped over because I already have this report loaded for you. Um, this area would be the get data area. So as you can see, if we go into get data, we can see the most used and common sources from which people pull data from, but if we click on more, you can actually see the different categories of data that you are able to pull data from. Where is it? Oh, here it is. So we have, if we click on file, we can see the different types of files that we can utilize. We can um, pull data from a CSV. We can actually load a CSV file, an XML document, JSON, um, different types of folders different types of databases, SQL, data, databases, SQL, MySQL, Amazon, Power Platforms as Dataverse, and Power BI datasets. All of the Azure um, services you can actually pull data from. Other online services, including SharePoint Online List, um, Dynamic 365, Azure DevOps, LinkedIn, and QuickBooks, for example. And if you click on other and you go to web, this, act, this would actually allow you to connect to any type of web service. And you can actually use this as well when you're connecting to different functionalities of SharePoint or even projects. However, what we would be using in order to connect to projects would be old data feed. When you click on old data feed, it actually takes you to this um, window and this is where you would put your URL for your specific project site. And then you would actually authenticate in order to be able to bring that data over on Power BI. Our first option is a basic area chart. A basic area chart is based on the line chart and it is the area between the access and the line filled in. We also have about two or three types of bar charts. Bar charts are a standard for looking at specific value across different categories. There you go. Here are different categories. This is your x axis and these are the values corresponding to each of the bars. Power BI also offers the option to put in um, card and multi-card levels. Um, these visuals are very useful for when you want to represent a single figure that summarizes your data. For example, you can have an average, you can have um, a variance, you can have a range, you can have a minimum, you can have a maximum, um, any of those types of summaries that are representative of your data. We also have donut charts. Donut charts are similar to pie charts. They also show a relationship of parts to a whole. 
here is your legend, here are the percentages that encompass the whole. Power BI also offers the option to incorporate gouges into your dashboard. A gouge displays a current status in the context of a goal. Another very interesting and unique visual that Power BI offers is the option to represent um, KPI sort of as an area representative of the progress toward a measurable goal. Power BI also has table options and a matrix option. The difference between a table and a matrix is that a matrix makes it easier to display data meaningfully across multiple dimensions. It supports a step layout, so it's a multi-level, multi-layout table. The matrix automatically aggregates the data and enables drill down. For example, if you had any sort of drill down here on your rows, you would have a plus sign that would allow you to go to the next levels of data in here. And this would serve, and this rows would serve as your subtotals for those. We also have maps. They're used to associate both categorical and quantitative information with spatial locations. If you have data that is related to a specific location, a zip code, a city, a country, you can actually display those in this map. This is a normal line graph. It emphasizes the overall shape of the entire series of values, usually over time. We also have waterfalls. Waterfall charts show a running total as values are added or subtracted. This is the feel and look of a waterfall in Power BI. And lastly, we do have the QA visual, which lets you ask questions about your data in natural language. I'm actually going to demonstrate for you how easy and how helpful it is to use this particular visual when you have a complex report at your hands. I have added a new page to my report just so I can add this visual and show you how easy and how useful it is. To start off, Power BI automatically suggests data that it thinks that you might be interested on as soon as you open this visual. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start from the beginning and show you which visual it is. It would be this visual, this little thought bubble. So you click on it and it automatically shows you a few suggestions. You can actually click on show all suggestions and it is actually giving you a few analytics that can be useful for you. For example, what is the availability by cost type? What is the availability by resource? top cost types by cap, top RV is by availability, what is the cap by genetic, what is the availability by RV, top resource demand, time phase data set, project names by availability, what is the availability resource demand time phase data, show me demand for the last year, average project remaining duration for each RVS, and then you can also ask in natural language any question that you would like to see. For example, how many? Um, and it actually even gives you other suggestions as soon as you put how many. For example, how many? And you can see all of this. How many resources are active? For example, 135. So this is very useful if you just have one question and you just want to gather that specific piece of data. This is another option that you have in order to accomplish those results. What, okay, what is, what cost? Okay, see, we can see, for example, what type of cost lips we have in this report. Um, let me think about another, how many projects, for example. How many projects? So if we put how many projects by actual finish date, for example, it would give us this. And then another thing that you can do whenever you are asking questions on a report, you can actually have that. If you click on those two squares here, it actually becomes a visual. 
So that's another pretty cool thing that you can do if you're looking to view your data in a certain way. It actually gives you a visual, and if you like that visual, you actually have the option to keep it. All right. So now that we looked at the visuals that can help you build a beautiful report in order to analyze your data for your projects, we can actually go into looking at the type of data that you would be utilizing in these dashboards. I'm going to start by showing you the projects table and the type of information that you would see on the projects table. This is a high level overview of your projects, um, but you can also see all of this information to the task and to the assignment level as well. Um, the type of information that you would see in this table would be um, all of the information regarding your project, like cost, start date, finish date, project actual work, um, variance, description, duration, fixed cost, last published date, last modified date, project name, project owner, even some metrics like remaining work, remaining cost, percent completed, variance, project status date, due date, we have um, even the schedule link, we have work health, we have schedule variance, and even some schedule slip and a work slip KPIs in order to be able to better measure and to better analyze your projects. Similar information can be seen on the assignments and on the tasks um, tables. As you can see, this is the assignments table and you also have start date, end date, cost, budget, cost, finish date, variance, remaining cost, remaining work. Every assignment is also tied to your task and to your projects. And you also have um, something different that you would see on the assignments table that you wouldn't see on your projects table. It would be the type of booking that is put on your resource once this assignment is assigned. And this would be whether it is committed or proposed. Similarly to this, we have the task table where we also have a project and a project tied to a task. We have a task finish date, we have a task start date, we have a task ID. The information that we have that is different here from our projects table would be that we have more detailed information on whether this task is overdue. We have a task sort, a task index, we have a task status, and also uh, whether a task is a milestone or not, and whether a task is active or not. On a task time phase data set, we have the same information, but it's looked at it by, it's looked at it at every single day. Do you have this? by every single day. You can see the status and all of this information per task every single day. It's a time-phased view of your data, as the name suggests, of course. We also have our project baselines. We share the forecasted, um, or not the forecasted, but the baseline for our cost, for our duration, for a finished date. And this is helpful to compare the project actuals to what we thought we were going to have in the beginning when we first started planning out the project. We also have our issues and risk list. This comes straight from our list in projects. Um, they're a combination between our metadata and the columns in the actual list. So we would have assigned resource category, discussion, due date, owner project, um, title, status, resolution, etc. We also have um, on the risk list, similarly to this, it is also a combination between metadata and the columns in our list. In our list, we have assigned two category, cost, exposure, due date, owner, probability, status, trigger, trigger risk, and trigger description, as well as the title of the item.
on resources, um, this tab I actually cannot I cannot click on because I would be showing you um, information that is private to our company and to our resources, and it would be a huge violation of privacy. However, this is where you would find um, all the information pertaining to your resource. Uh, the, uh, the maximum hours that it can be booked, the type of resource it is, whether it's a genetic resource or another type of resource. You could also see in there um, metrics such as the cost of the resource per hour, etc. We also, um, another thing that is really, that I really like about Power of Projects and their integration with Power BI is that they actually offer you a already built-in date table. And then this way you don't have to go about um, building your own data table. So it's one of the perks of integrating um, Microsoft products with Microsoft products, I would say. And then you also have your measures table. This is for any measures that you created on your own in order to further analyze your data. To create a new measure, you click here and create a new measure. And to create a new calculated column, you click on create a new column over here where you see my mouse moving. And this would be calculated in the form of DAX. However, we're not going to go into DAX in this session go over a report pack. On a report pack, our first page is our portfolio dashboard. The portfolio dashboard is a glint summary of all your projects, including completion status and performance KPIs, like project count, project cost, project variance, project work, work variance, active risk, and active issues. The portfolio dashboard provides an executive summary of all the projects with the ability to filter by project progress and project manager. Users can also link back to the schedule in project for the web link appearing in here. This is also interactive, meaning, for example, if I click on a type of project, the entire page would actually change accordingly. Another thing that I want to show you is actually how the fields that we looked into when we were looking at our data are playing its part into building this dashboard. For example, if we go to this card, which is project count, we can see that um, this is the count of project ID. However, we changed the name to display project count. But if we hover over, we can see the table and the column that it actually is. Um, and we can see the type of calculation as well. We can also see that in here, we can see what type of calculation it is showing us. For example, here we have um, the sum of the project cost. Over here, it would be the same, but we have the variance. Then we have the sum of project work, work variance. We also have the count of active risk and the count of active issues. Over here, we have a simple table with just some data to show us an overview of what we have on our projects, project name, project owner, schedule link, start day, finish day, cost, and some health metrics for our project, as well as percent completed. Our project timeline is an interactive timeline of projects in the portfolio with their planned start date, finish dates, as well as completion data. The portfolio timeline shows visually where all the projects fall on a timeline, including their duration and progress date. Projects are colored by project manager, and the tooltip on each bar in the timeline shows additional details. If you hover over, you would be able to see the name of this project, the task, um, start date, and the completion and resource. As you can see, it is pretty interactive. So if I click on 2021, it would only show me the project on 2021 to 19 and so on. Project milestones. Project milestones show key milestones on a portfolio and their status. 
in this milestone, you can see it actually summarizes all the milestones that were completed in the past days, milestones to be completed, and their corresponding donuts. So we have a table per each category and then their donuts. Um, over here, we don't have data at this moment. However, this would have their um, corresponding donut if we did have milestones completed in the last days for this particular demo. And as you can see, if we showcase, we have our filters for this visual, which is um, in the last 30 days and we 1% completed, so we apply those visuals. And those visuals are only applied at the visual level, as I explained earlier. We do have some filters showcased in this page. Um, because we only want milestones. So on our task table, we have tasks and we also have tasks that are milestones. And because this table only pertains to milestones, we put a filter in the entire page so that it would only show as milestones. This is an example of how a filter can be used for a page versus how it can be used for a visual and the difference that it makes. For this page, we have overdue milestones. These are past due milestones that have not yet been completed. Um, so again, we have our page filters, task is milestone and task is overdue. Next up, we have um, portfolio risk. This is an aggregated risk across a portfolio and their impact on the portfolio. We have risk by category, we have risk versus cost and exposure, we have risk by project owner, and then we have a table just showcasing some basic data about our risk with, with some conditional formatting. Next up, we have portfolio issues. These are aggregated issues across reports. Because issues are immediate project challenges, it is very important that they're highly visible to allow management to understand the nature and impact of most critical issues. Project issues, having senior management visibility, helps ensure that all issues are resolved before they impact the project success factors. As you can see, we have issues by category, issues by status, just by project owner, and then we have our table with just a quick overview and data on each issue, um, displaying the issue title, the project that it corresponds to, who it is assigned to, due date, category, priority, and status. Next step, we have resource availability. The resource availability report allows resource managers to quickly and easily determine which resources are over allocated and need to have their workload reduced, as well as resources that have the capacity to be able to um, carry more work or take on additional work. So we have our demand and capacity over time graph, availability over time, and our availability heat map as well by resource. Then we have our resource overview. This is an overview of the resources by department, by cost, and by, this is um, for in order for management to get an insight into what the resource pool is and their data. They are associated by groups, department, and RVS even by cost type. And then we have our table with just some quick data and information about our resources. Now we have resource assignments. These are the assignments that are assigned to each resource. So we have here, for example, we have Aaron Painter and he has this number of projects assigned to him with this number of assignments. And then we also have start day, finish day, percent completed in the amount of work hours per project and assignment as well. Assignment actual remaining work per project type. And then we also have work by project type. And as I mentioned on other report pages, these are very interactive. So if you click on a certain data label, the, the entire report will change accordingly. Again, by, by clicking on the visual, you can see the fields that are dropped and the calculation. So for example, over here we have the sum 
of remaining work and actual work in order to build this graph. And on the shared axis, we have project type. This page was meant in order to select a specific resource, and by selecting a specific resource, you will be able to see all of this information tailored to that resource, like you would be able to see the, the number of assignments, work, actual work, remaining work, remaining cost projects, and then you would see the work by project on that resource. The project status page, is similar to the resource detail page, meaning that this page was um, constructed so that you can select a specific project and then from there see all of the metrics that apply to that project. And over here we have a dashboard or a compilation of the issues and risks per project as well. This is also for you to be able to pick a project and then you will see all the issues and risks that pertain to that specific project, so you can address that project as well. And then over here we have our Q&A that we have already went over and worked on earlier in our webinar. Thank you for tuning into today's webinar on Power BI for Project Managers. Advisacon has experts in a variety of technical fields uh, focusing on Microsoft products. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. We do provide free consultations as well.